would you stand for the reading of God's word? Can you let the musicians and the worship team know that you appreciate their gifts, their talents, their abilities that God has given? We thank you, Lord, for that. I wasn't going to read this, and I, I, you know, I'm saying, okay, God, here we go. But I want to read from Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 through 7. And that's where we're going to read, Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. But I hear David in my heart right now. And I'm going to read just a few scriptures in Psalms before we get into our opening scripture today. Psalms 86 and 1 says, Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear me. For I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am, for I am holy. You are, my, you are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord. For I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant. How many needs God to rejoice your soul? My goodness. For to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Come on, we open up our soul to so many other things. But I wish somebody would lift up your soul to God this morning. For to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good. Somebody say you're good. And ready to forgive. How many is grateful that you have a father who will forgive you? <laughs> How many had some fathers you wish would, would, would have forgive, you know, a little better? And they, they like to beat you, you know what I mean? Pull out them switches and stuff and tell you to go get your own. And sometimes God will whip us, but I'm thankful for a God who's forgiving. An abundant, he, and for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who what? Who call upon you. How many want to call upon a God of mercy this morning? How many want to give ear to the Lord in prayer and attend to His voice and His supplication? Come on. In the day of trouble, I'm going to call upon you, O Lord. In the day of adversity, I'm going to call upon you because I found out that nothing else works. When nothing else works, He works. Now then, let's get into our scripture. Isaiah 5, 1 and 7 says, Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in the midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes. But it brought forth the opposite of what he wanted. It brought forth wild grapes. And now, O oh inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, judge, please, between me and my vineyard. Now this is what I want you to catch. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then? When I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please, let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedges, and it shall be burned and break down its walls, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will, and I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. Wouldn't it be a shame? That God has rain for us, but he's not going to release it because of us. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah and he, his pleasant plant, plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would bless this word. I thank you for your word. That you said in your scripture, in the word, that you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your voice is our direction. Your voice is our GPS system. And God, I just give you glory and praise for your presence that has already been here. 
But God, I know the best has not, not yet been presented because God, you move from glory to glory. So God, I pray that you impart your word. Lord, let the seed go into deep soil and create roots that will hold in the midst of a storm. God, we give you the glory and the praise for all that you are doing and what you are about to do in this very moment. I thank you for the breakthrough that's already taken place in this house. But God, I'm asking for a soul this morning. I'm asking for somebody who came maybe just to hear the music or who came just to see what was going on, but they got a hold of the Holy Ghost. God, you, we, we suck the Holy Ghost. We, we, we got them on like a coon dog after a coon this morning to get a hold of a soul, to get a hold of a heart, Lord Jesus, to change and transform and renew somebody's mind. And God, I ask you to do just that. Let your Holy Ghost be released upon us today, even greater now. And we give you the glory and the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I wanted to read the Psalms because I think it's important that in this time where God has moved in a mighty way, we have to, now the ground is tilled, but now we got to open up our ears to hear what he's saying. And that's what... What David was saying is, Lord, hear me. Hear me, Lord. How many knows God hears you? How many knows it's important that we hear Him? He hears us no matter where we're at. If we are sour grapes or good grapes, He hears us. But what God is saying right here, he's, I'm going to read just a, a, down to four one more time in Isaiah 5, 1 and 7. It says, now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on, on a very fruitful hill. It's better when it's a fruitful place, right? He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. How many knows God wants good things to come out of you? But our flesh gets in the way. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, please, between me and my vineyard. And this is what I want you to catch. This is the title of the sermon. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? What more could have been done? Somebody say that with me. What more could have been done? As I read this scripture, I've heard these words many times in various situations in, in life. We have heard those words, what more could I do? What more could have been done? Perhaps if you were uh, able to listen to a couple of doctors outside uh, of a room discussing a terminal patient or a patient who has died on the operating table, you might hear a doctor remorsefully say in asking the question, what more could I do? What more could have been done in this situation? Or you might even hear the words from a family member that is speaking of their children or a child whose life is being destroyed by drugs and alcohol. How many knows the devil will lure your children by the devices, the common sins of this world and, and drugs and alcohol and all immoral lifestyles. And, and you might hear that parent say, what more could I have done in this situation? And, and they may even say, I have bailed him out of jail. And I'm, I'm getting real with some people. They may have said uh, over and over again, I've taken care of this kid and I've bought them groceries and I've paid the light bills for them and I've paid their rent just to make sure they didn't end up on the street somewhere, uh, somewhere away from everything everybody and and they may even say it they may say what more could I have done those words might be spoken to a husband or a wife that has tried over and over to save their marriage. They've done everything. They've, they've tried everything they can to save their marriage and they've, they've worked on it. And those words might be spoken and, and, and they are saying, I've forgiven them time and time again. Even when I knew they were cheating on me. Come on, somebody. And they were lying on me and I, and I wanted it to, to make it work. And so I forgave them and, and maybe with a broken heart. And we have seen this. Uh, in our lifetime that, 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 that the broken heart speaks out and says what more could I have done 
There are moments when these words are spoken genuinely, searching out the matter to see if there's anything that remains. I want to ask you to look and see, is there any remains? Is there any pieces that can be put together? Maybe the formula can change. Maybe things could be different. And, and, but so many times we say those words, is, is there something still available? Is there resources that we haven't tapped into? And we've searched everything out and we begin to say, is it the treatment that it, that's not right? Have we tried the right treatment? Have we, have we went to the right doctor? You know how we do. Have we went to the right source? Have we, have we been to the right rehab? Have we been to the right marriage counselor? Is there's something that I can do. Maybe you've tried everything, but the truth is, in a lot of cases and most cases, there is still yet a little more that we could do. And it might be finding new treatments, and it may be finding uh, a, another doctor or a better job or, or finding counselors, but what about being more faithful in the church house? What about being more diligent in reading the Word of God and praying more in, in, in rather than just in the times when, you, when it's an emergency or you're, you're hit rock bottom? Why not be faithful to God? What about trying being faithful to Him who's been faithful to you? What about being more faithful with your tithes and your offerings and being more compassionate and being more merciful and being more understanding? We always have the answer, don't we? But what about being a little bit more merciful? And what about more, rather than depending on your way, why don't you start leaning on God's way? We could eat better. We could exercise better. There's so many things that we could do better. We could watch a little less TV and spend more time with the family. What a concept. The truth is, many times there is more we can do, but we have already decided in our mind how far we're going to go. We are going to go just right here, but God is saying in this season, and we've been preaching it, that there's no more limits. I'm not placing lines on God. I'm not going to place him in boundaries. I'm not going to place him in a box. And rather than leaning on physicians of this world, I'm going to lean on the great physician who can deliver all my sickness and diseases. He's the one who created me, so i got to go back to the manufacturer, and i got to get him to fix some stuff on the inside. Come on, somebody, help me. you got to go to the source. See, we're going to the supply, and he's saying, come to me. And in our text today, the question is asked, what more could have been done? We, we placed this invisible line, and, and to cross it would cause so much pain and cost us more than we're willing to pay. And spiritually, emotionally, and, and physically, and even, even financially, we, we want to be comfortable, and we want to sit in our box, and we want God to do it the way we think he should do it. And we think we can find it here on planet Earth, but I come to tell you, you weren't created for this place. You were created for a Another. So you got to start looking up where your redemption draweth nigh. Your help cometh from the Lord. The opportunities that we're not taking advantage of, we can look at this and, and if it would have been a man asking the question or a woman asking the question, we would immediately begin to think of the possibilities that have not been uh, explored or maybe the opportunities that we're not taking advantage of or the resources that may have been ignored in the situation. We know that we can do that, but this was not a man or a woman asking the question at all. It was God himself asking the question. Everlasting Father, the all-consuming fire that we were talking about. He was asking the question, but how many realize that he's not asking it for you to answer it? God didn't ask it because he wanted an answer from us. God asked it because he wanted you and I to answer it for ourselves. Come on, somebody. He wanted you and I to ask it for ourselves. God asked it in the same way he asked Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was. But he wanted Adam to, that, 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 that question to go out of Adam's mouth. He wanted Adam to answer the question to himself that said, that said, I was naked and I hid myself. I messed up, God. And it was her fault. How many knows we like to blame somebody else? And in our scripture today, God has done everything on his side, but the vineyard, Israel, still has not borne good fruit, thus judgment will fall. How many knows when you're not producing good fruit, judgment will come? 
The question is to everybody this morning and to every person that ever drew breath on this planet, green, beautiful earth that God has created, what more could God do for you? I want you to ask that question. What more can God do for you? Turn it to your neighbor and ask him, say, what more can God do? What more could, could, could have God done to save you this morning? What more does God have to do to heal you this morning? What more does God, what, what does he have to do to set you free? What more could he have, have he done to give you life abundantly and give you joy beyond measure and peace that passes all understanding? The answer, I got the answer for you this morning. He don't have to do absolutely nothing. He's already done enough. Come on, somebody. God has done everything, and there's nothing more that God needs to do for you and I. There's nothing God's overlooked. There's nothing God has forgotten. There is absolutely nothing undone or left out. For God has crossed every T, and he's dotted every I. His mercy is everlasting. He is good, and he's perfect in his every way. I'm not talking about a man. I'm not talking about a doctor or a physician or a lawyer. I'm not talking about anybody in human abilities. Always leaving something undone. Always leaving something uncovered. Always leaving something unused. Always He's leaving something undone. You want me to tell you why? Simply because we're human. We're not perfect, but he is perfect. He has done everything. He's accomplished the task. If God be for me, who can be against me? I'm talking about Alpha and Omega. I'm talking about the beginning and the end. I'm talking about the first and the last. I'm talking about the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm talking about the chief cornerstone, the good shepherd who gives his life to his sheep and will save his sheep. He is the great high priest. He's the Lamb of God. He's He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and he's with you right now. What more does he have to do? He is our hope. He is our peace. He is our redeemer. He is our sanctifier. He is our baptizer. He is our healer. He is our mentor. He is our mediator. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door. Stop looking at the wrong door. He's the one. He is the resurrection. The word made flesh and dwelt among us. He is the true vine. Somebody say he's the true vine. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is your friend. Think about that. He is your friend. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you even until the end of time. What more does he have to do? What more could he do to save you today? What does he have to do to save you, to bring you out of your mess? What more can he do to keep you from going to a devil's hell? What more does he have to do to make us think where we are right now? What more could he do to keep you from going to hell? What more could he do to keep you from loving him and serving him and wanting him? He bankrupt heaven. God bankrupt heaven and sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins. He sent his Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you, to teach you, to guide you, to comfort you, to empower you. What more could God do? What is God, what did, what did God not do to show you how much he loves you? What did he not do? What did he not do to show you that you're victorious? What did, why do we walk around with our head down when our Father has taken care of everything? He didn't leave anything unturned. He didn't leave anything undone. What is it that God did not show you so that you will love him, so that you will line everything up with the mind of Christ? What did he not do? What line is there in your mind that he didn't cross and failed to cross, that he left you feeling justified? Here it goes, to be rebellious. To be rebellious or selfish. Justified to lie to him and to lie to yourself. Justified to rob him your love and your devotion. Justified to criticize the church. Hello? Justified to hold anger and pride and unforgiveness. What's given you that justification? Because that's not the way he was. He loved. He lived in humility. He gave so that you could live. What more does he have to do to get your attention? 
Justified to reject the one who created you and died in your place for your sins. Justified to reject the one who redeemed you and gave you eternal life. The Holy Spirit brings the question to you and I this morning. Why are we still living in, in, in satisfied to satisfy our flesh and to satisfy ourselves in every moment? Why are we not living to satisfy the creator, the God of the universe, the one who holds it all in the palm of his hand? Why can we not be satisfied? in his ways that we have to go our ways has he not done enough for you has he not done has he not went through enough pain so that you don't have to go through pain enough today has he not done enough for you has he not brought unity where the devil is trying to bring division and we're going to his way instead of the way of unity where God commands his blessing has he not done enough to bring you victory why are we still living in rebellion against the love of God? Why are we still producing this wild grape, this lust that controls our mind? Because the truth of the matter is, when we stand before the judgment seat of God, we will have to answer the question given today, what more could God have done and answered? What more could have God done? And we'll answer like, like this. We'll say, absolutely nothing. My God has done everything. He has paid it all. He's healed it all. He's delivered it all. He's saved it all. Why? Because when he was on the cross, that when he said, it is finished, it was done, it's settled, the devil can't defeat the victory that is on the inside of you. What more could God do? Absolutely nothing. And all you have to do is believe. As you look in the eyes of the one who left heaven and came to earth and went to the cross and shed his blood, his precious blood, a perfect blood, a perfect lamb. And we'll have to look in the eyes of our Savior and you will have to say to Him, God, you did everything. I confess your Jesus. I confess your Lord. You are the reason that I can live in victory. Or you'll have to say, I should have listened. You gave me the opportunity. You'll remember times like this when the Holy Spirit tugs on your heart. You'll look around and people will be burning up where the fire's not quenched and the worm dieth not. That means your mind will not shut off from this moment. It's quiet in here this morning. Think about it. Every opportunity God has given you and we rebel against the word of God. When you reject his word, when you don't accept it, you're in rebellion. Come on somebody. You're in rebellion. What more does he have to do to prove his word to us? Absolutely nothing. Just like the children of Israel in our text, you will have to admit before God, it was me. It was self. It was stubbornness and pride and rebellion. It was my religion. It was my self-righteousness. I got it all figured out, you know. And, and our hypocrisy. It was the lust of my desires. It was the sin. And you might stand here today and say, the devil made me do it and I can't help it. And I will tell you, you're right on that. Because the devil did make you do it. The devil is the one who puts the desire for sin in our heart. I will also agree that we can't help it. That's why he can. You cannot help it, but God can help it. He is our Savior. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. And, and, and what we can't do, he can do. Not one of us with, uh, has the, the ability in our nature and, 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 and on this level, not one of us has the ability to walk it out. Sin works overtime to make sure you are slaves to its lust and its desires. I'm here to tell you sin will work against what God wants to do. He's working overtime even right now. He wants to distract you. He wants to discourage you. That's why we must be filled with the Spirit of God and operating out of the Spirit, man. The good news is this morning when Jesus died on the cross in your place he didn't just die to pay for your sins he died as your sins 
The one who, who knew no sin was made sin that we might ma be made the righteousness of God in him. He didn't just die for the sinner. He died as the sinner. He took your place and, and he said it is finished. And when he said it's finished, it was completed. It was settled in heaven and it was settled in hell. He died to put death to sin. He died to put death to the man of sin and the nature of sin. And not only did he put down death, not only did he bring death to the old sinner in you but I'm thankful for this he brought a new living thing on the inside of me the kingdom of God is within me living of rivers of living water on the inside of me he brought life that's brand new and a man that's brand new created in me that is righteousness come on somebody it's not possible in ourselves to be righteousness and you may feel as if you cannot uh, obtain the righteousness of God but it is possible it, it is impossible with us but how many knows that all all things are possible through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. What more does he have to do? What more does he have to say to get our attention? For God Almighty stepped out of heaven to earth through a seed and, a, and the womb of a virgin. And for, for 33 years, and a, 33 and a half years, he walked this earth and, and they, he let them crucify him. He let them place a crown of thorns upon his head. And he let them spit upon him and mock him and curse him. They spit in his face. He let them spit in his face. He let them curse him. He didn't have to stand there and take it, but he did. He let them curse them. He let them drove, drive nine, uh, nails in his hands and in his feet and, and a spear in his side. And he let them beat him until he was unrecognizable. And he let them lay him in a borrowed tomb and rolled the stone across the door. And he went into the underworld and the region of the damned. And he, for three days, he fought the whole population of hell. Can I tell you, he did that for you and he did that for your neighbor and he did it for your children and he did it for your children's children and he took the keys of death hell in the grave and the enemy and he busted hell wide open and he kicked the door of hell open and the Bible said he spoiled principalities and powers I, hallelujah this is exciting me this morning he spoiled the kingdom of darkness and made a show of them open, openly triumphing over the hell and the demonic forces and the devil himself and on the third day somebody say the third day he came back into his body walked out of the tomb victorious uh, over death, hell, and the grave. Uh, and we are victorious because he kicked the, hey, come on somebody, he kicked the door of hell wide open so that you have a way of escape. Uh, the devil can't control you. The devil can't contain you. The devil can't imprison you because if God be for you, who can be against you? What hell can stand against you? What prison can hold you? Somebody give God praise for resurrection power. He spoiled principalities, which means he took back. And for 40 days, he even walked on the earth, proving what he had done. Proving, I'm alive. Ain't you glad you don't serve a dead God? You don't serve some dead God laid up behind a tomb somewhere, some little fat statue got to rub his belly to get anything done, and nothing's still done. Come on, somebody, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. When your babies are sick at night, you just say, Jesus, come on, somebody. When they're laying on the bed and they don't have breath in them, and you just say, Jesus, and all of a sudden, resurrection power enters their body, and they set up and say, Mama, I want you. Come on, I've seen it done in my own little girl. And he's there when she's falling from a two-story window and hitting an air conditioner in you. And the EMT, the EMT even said that's the greatest miracle in his career that he's ever seen. Can I tell you, you don't need some fat boy to rub his belly you don't need a dead God I don't know about you but I want a live I want the fire I want the word of God that I can speak over my children that the blood of Jesus is enough and all I got to do is say Jesus and my daughter got to come up off of that bed and live and not die and declare the works of the Lord Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to bring death back to life right now. I don't know if it's a dead dream. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know if it's your job that's been taken away. Stop looking at the supply and start looking to the source. God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can think, ask, or imagine. I wish I had some saints to get a praise on right now on his word. On the 
the third day, the stone was rolled away. Oh, death, where is your thing? Oh, grave, where is your victory? He commissioned his church to carry this work. He commissioned the church to go to Jerusalem and get the same power he had. I want to ask a, a, a simple question. How many believe truly in your heart that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I said, how many believe that the same resurrection power that kicked the hell out of the devil himself, come on, you know you was a devil living your own way, and he kicked the devil in the hell out of you, and all of a sudden heaven you're experiencing this morning because God is able. He is able. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the TV says. I don't care what society says. I don't care what Google says. My God says he will supply all. Stop going to Google and start going to God. I felt that this morning because if you find Google, you're going to find where you're going to die. Sickness is going to take you out. But I ain't looking at Google. I'm looking to God this morning. I'm looking to, I'm looking to resurrection. I'm looking to life. I'm looking to the one who took the keys of my sickness, the keys of my addiction, the keys of my pain, the keys of my heartache. Stop going to Google and start going to God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost all in there. Turn, on, turn that iPhone around and look at the bite out of that apple. It's there for a reason, I'm here to tell you. It's bringing marriages to divorce. It's taking people to hell. It's a secret that the enemy's speaking to your ear and to your family. Your children are off somewhere, and the enemy's filling them with a bunch of garbage, and they're Googling this and Googling that. I come to tell you, stop looking at Google. Stop looking at this world and its resources, and start looking up to heaven. Start being planted by the rivers of water, and let your fruit come in your season. I come to tell you your resources is in the water. <laughs> Off the pages and at the rock, into the rock of ages. Start looking to the God who is able. It's a choice for us. Because we'll either choose to do one or two things. We'll choose to cherish him or reject him. What are we going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus this morning? You're either going to accept him and give him your life and follow after his love. You're either going to cherish him Or reject him. It's only two choices we have. The text in the message was God saying to the rebellious, self willed people. I know that's not our day, is it? He's saying, I love you. He's saying, Jeff, please wake up. Somebody been asking, will the dead bones live again? It's your choice. I love you. Please wake up. Please think about what I have done for you. And I'm returning again. I'm going to come and get you. Because if you don't, trouble is coming. I feel an urgency in my spirit. I feel such an urgency because time is winding up. 
God's saying, I'm sending one last message before I bring judgment. I want you to ask yourself this morning, this message that God is trying to deliver to you and I, ask each other, what did I leave undone? Where did I come up short? God is asking you, what did I leave undone? What did I come up short in your life? How did I come up short in your life? Did I not prove my love to you over and over again? How many has God proved his love over and over again in your life? I I don't know about you, but today I want to ask ask God, Lord, I want more of you. I want to be completely charged by the Holy Ghost. I want to be completely charged by the love of God and his word and everything that he has for me. To the one who gave everything to me, I want to say, God, I'm giving everything back to you. I want you. I desire you. I desire you more than anything this world has to give. I don't think I'm the only one in here this morning that feels this way. I believe that there are some folk in here who is tired of the world you're living in. This world is not your home. You're just passing through. Your treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You're here because you want Jesus to totally consume you or you would have stayed at the house somewhere. You want the fire of God to overtake you. You want the power of God to all consume you and flood your mind and flood your heart. You want to give him everything because he has given everything to you. I know I haven't even really scratched the surface of what this word says about God. There's so much he can do for you. There's so much in store for you. There's so much for your tomorrow but I'm here to tell you there's more for your right now God wants to change your situation now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things I cannot see ask God to consume you ask God to fill you with his fire tell him you want the Holy Spirit to possess you to come over you to flood your homes to flood your children to flood your situation come on somebody stand up right now to your feet and ask God to come into your life say there's more I can do I know you've done everything, but I can press in a little more. I can read a little more. I can pray a little more. I can praise a little more. I can do a whole lot more than what I've been doing. If that's you, would you give God a praise right now? Maybe you haven't praised him or not. Press into his presence as he releases your answer, as he releases your victory, as he releases your promise, as he releases your joy, as he releases your peace. You've got to open up and praise him and catch a fire so you can release a fire. Remain standing all over this building as they come to the piano at this time. The question is, what more can he do? What more could he have done? We know the answer to that. Absolutely nothing. Now I want to ask you the question to ask yourself. I want to ask myself this morning. What more can you do? What more could we have done? Because the truth of the matter is, we all can do more. We can be more faithful to church. When all hell is breaking loose in our life and God opens a door and an opportunity you really don't feel like walking through that door because you've, you've made the line in the sand. And you can draw that line however you see in your mind. You can draw that line with, with all the thoughts of the enemy consuming you and taunting you and say, I'm not going this far because of this, because of this. Come on, somebody. Because that happened and this happened. I can't go this far. I want to ask you the question, what if he said that? I can't go any further than this. You know what? He did question it. He's in the garden. He didn't want to leave the garden. I'm here to tell you, some of you don't want to leave the garden. But when you do, I feel the Holy Ghost. You've been in so much pain and agony and and, and the enemy has fought you all your life and you felt the pressures of this world and you're at the place as Jesus was when he was 33 and he walked out to the garden and he's praying about what's coming next. You want me to tell you how you're going to obtain the power of God? You're going to have to give everything. Why? Because he gave everything. I crucify my flesh. 
so that you live. And there's going to be moments you're on that rock and you're praying and in a sense, in a spiritual realm, your sweats is turning as drops of blood. That's a good thing. Because the pr- pressure is producing power. I've been to that place. I've seen the Garden of Gethsemane. Can I tell you what's awesome about it? We was talking about this at, at the men's retreat. I don't, I don't remember who I was telling. But you can go back. You can Google search. No, don't do that. You can God search. <laughs> Well, go get it something where you can see a picture. That's what I'm saying. All right, Lord. But I've been to the place where his blood turned his blood. His his blood fell from his brow as the pressure of what he was about to do consumed him. Stress so much that blood came. You know why it came upon his brow? Because that's your thinking cap. He's already sweated out so you don't have to sweat it out. He didn't come to give you confusion. God's not the author of confusion. All that's already been sweat out. But when the blood touched the ground, can I tell you those trees, those olive trees that were there, they're still living? You want me to tell you why? Because everything everything his blood touches has to live. That is good. Everything his blood touches has to live. And when you're sweating it out, when you're going through hell, when you're pressed on every side, and it's an all consuming attack of the enemy, the pressure is producing the power. And what you imagine is what's going to become. Come on, somebody. When you feel hell, I want you to picture Jesus in the garden. Taking on what you're facing right now. He's already, taken, he's already taken care of it. It's already over with. Your victory is already won. What you need to realize is that when you're feeling pressure on every side, you need to see the picture of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And when that blood touched the ground, you know what he said? He said, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. God's asking you this morning, nevertheless, I don't care what you're going through, but nevertheless, I trust you, Lord. I'm going to obey you, Lord because it's not what I want to do right now it's what you want to do and I know that if I do what you want to do peace is coming and joy is already here and and my hope is come on somebody my hope is not in this world but it's in him it's in the blood it's in the power when you've been pressed on every side I promise you if you'll trust in him you will not be crushed you're not the crushed one the devil is the one under your foot being crushed every bone in his body is crushed when you fight on a supernatural level we gotta stop fighting on the natural level we gotta stop looking listen I think God can use physicians but why can't we use the great physician We went up to Doug Stoke's place and he's got the same heartbeat we do. If God can't do it, who's going to do it? And if he does it through a doctor, that's wonderful. But you better pray that God does it through the doctor. But I don't know about you, I believe God's still a healer. 
I believe there's still a Smith Wigglesworth anointing that he has imparted into some people in this room. And when they have faith enough and build on to that faith, they're going to lay hands on the sick and we're going to see them recover in this building. I'm telling you, it's coming. I, I declare that overflow is going to be different this year. I declare that the cripple will get up and walk and the blind will see and sinners are going to be saved. Hallelujah. And sinners are going to be saved. And sinner and drug addictions are going to be broken. And marriages are going to come back together. Anybody going to believe that with me in the house? Come on, build on to your faith this morning. Build on to your faith this morning. He's saying, what more do I have to do for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved if you'll believe what he's done for you. The victory is yours. The power is yours. The peace is yours. The joy is yours. Now I want to ask you, those of you who feel like I'm trying but I could do more, raise your hand and let me see. Say, God, help me to do more. Say it again. God, help me to do more. Say, open my ears, Lord, to hear you. Open my heart to love like you do. Conform my will to yours. Direct me. Lead me. Guide me. I trust you. I believe in you. Say, open my ears to hear what you say. Open my heart to love like you do. Say, God, it's my desire to follow you. It's my desire to hear your word. It's my desire to grow. It's my desire to be good fruit. Come on. It's my desire to be good fruit. It's my desire to bring good fruit. It's my desire to bring light in the darkness. It's my desire to be the true, hanging on the true vine, producing good fruit, not sour fruit, not fruit, not fruit where, where your, your glory is not revealed. But God, we want your glory revealed in our lives, Lord Jesus. Let us not be that lamp that's all clouded up with the smoke just because we, 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 we didn't cut off the wick and we didn't cut back the junk and we didn't cut off the thing that we needed to cut off and we're all clouded up right now but sometimes we got to clean the globe and sometimes we got to cut some stuff off I wish somebody would say cut the junk off lift your hands and say I surrender I'll do more I'll clean my globe so I can be seen so you can be seen in me so I can be seen shining the light of your glory come on lift your hand and surrender I know we're doing it a lot but that's all right Hallelujah. You know what? If you raised your hands this morning, I know it's probably every one of us in this building, but let's get up here on these altars and pour some stuff out. Sometimes we got to empty the junk so he can fill me up till I overflow. You can't be contaminated and ask him to fill you up. Because his glory, you think about the pipelines, you know, when they get a little clog in them or, you know, even in your, in your bathtub or in the shower and, and you get that clog and it all, all the water and all that nastiness and all that junk starts coming up. Somebody say, I got to get it unclogged. I got to get it out. You got to unclog it. And sometimes you got to go to those little resources to get, to get the, the clog out and the junk out. And you got to pour some stuff in. You need to pour the Holy Ghost in right now. But the only way you're going to do it is try to empty some of that junk out. Sometimes you got to unscrew some things and, and release some things so you can dig in and get some stuff out. I just ask that you start digging the junk out. Get the stuff out. God wants your pipe so clean that the divine oil will flow. He wants the divine oil to flow out of your vessel. 
So if you would and you feel like it, get up in these altars right now. And I just want you to pour yourself out unto God. Pour out the junk. Pour out the fear. Pour out the doubt. Pour out the sickness. Say, sickness, you cannot control me because I'm not controlled by you. I'm controlled by the word of God and the voice of God. And the word of God tells me I can be healed, so I accept his word. The word of God tells me I can live in victory, so I accept his word. The word of God tells me I can have peace that passes all understanding, so I accept his word. I'm going to do my part, God, because you've already done your part. You've done enough for me, so the least I can do is give it all to you. Come on, give it all to him this morning. If you don't feel like coming up here, give it all to him where you're sitting. Give it all to him. Focus on him right now.